It's Johnny Two Face here, back with another reaction video. This time, I'm reacting to French Resurgence Hundred Years War documentary by Kings and Generals. Now, if you haven't seen my episode to the first two episodes of this series, I suggest you check them out before checking this one out. So, um, yeah, so, um, the usual disclaimer when I react to any historical content, if I don't show so much of what is considered a proper reaction, is probably obvious that I don't know much about the subject at hand. If I do know anything, I'll most likely pause the video, give my input. I hate being fat. Um, and um, or ask any curious questions, which hopefully will be answered in the comments below. So, um, so the link to the original video will be in the description down below. Please go and subscribe to his to um sorry to Kings and Generals, which is another amazing excuse me history channel on YouTube and. Um, so, um, <clears throat> feel free to support their channel and check out their other content and say that the wrong order. So, without further ado, let's get this up on screen and see what happens in this episode. At a lavish royal banquet taking place in late May of 1357, Edward III of England was accompanied by two of the most prestigious dinner guests in medieval history. On one side of him sat the captured King of Scotland, David II, okay. and on the other was France's Valois King, Jean II. These priceless hostages were being displayed purposefully as an indicator of just how far the English kingdom of only wow. around 4 million people had come. <coughs> it had defeated the flower of medieval Europe twice and was now in a position to win the war. Though chaos reigned in the now kingless France, and mm. Edward III believed his complete victory to only be a matter of time, the old land of Charlemagne would start to recover under the capable rule of Charles V. Mm. Welcome to our video on the Caroline phase of the Hundred Years' War. And if you're looking for more documentaries to watch, the sponsor of today's video, Magellan Feel TV, free to check out the sponsor you. if you're interested. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service run by filmmakers that has over 3,000 documentaries on a free trial today. Don't forget that this promotion supports our channel. When the Black Prince removed his royal mm -hmm. Valois prisoner from France, he also removed the anchor which kept the ship of state afloat. As military historian John Corrigan stated in his book, A Great and Glorious Adventure, France was effectively in a state of civil war. Mm. The three years following Poitiers were some of the worst in French history. Rabid discontent with the government spread like a plague among the nobility, and Paris's wow. third estate even asserted its authority mm. under the leadership of Etienne Marcel, a cloth merchant. This wasn't the end of it. Wow. Demobilized soldiers, deserters, and common bandits from England, Gascony, France, and even further afield, mm -hmm. went renegade and formed so-called routiers, or free companies. These okay. bands of armed men roamed and ravaged the lawless countryside almost at will, wow. serving any who would pay them, and mm. sometimes even setting themselves up as robber barons in their own right. I know this is a weird time to pause, but I never knew it it led to this much chaos in France at the time. Obviously I know without the king without a king sometimes it will um be chaotic but um but I'm just curious like when cuz isn't Burgundy didn't Burgundy like separate from France in a way? I'm cuz it'll probably probably later on later on this series will probably uh, I'll probably get my answer but I know that um, Burgundy will turn against France, and um, but as I said, I've always said about stuff that I already know. To my shame, that most of the medieval history that I know, I started learning from um, when I used to play Age of Empires a lot when I was younger. So that's where I take most of my look, you know, give most of my knowledge of what I know on. They would remain a problem for Which decades is to come. Even in lands where feudal control was maintained, it didn't do France any good. 
extortionate ransom payments paid to the English for the birth of highborn prisoners taken at Poitiers, prompted a ruthless tax hike, and this finally wow. inflamed the peasants into a revolt. Hmm. A horrific bloodletting, known as the Jacri, began in the Oise Valley, with peasants lynching and murdering any noble they could get their hands on. The uprising lasted for weeks, before Charles of Navarre brutally put it down. Hmm. Threatened by another large assault by Edward III, the beleaguered Dauphin signed the Treaty of Brittany in October 1360, okay. giving the Plantagenets all of Aquitaine, Ponthieu, and Calais in return for the English king's renunciation of his own claim to the French throne, mm. in addition to a £600,000 ransom for Jean's return. When two-thirds of the ransom had been paid, John II was allowed to return to France. However, one of his imprisoned sons escaped contrary to the agreement, mm. which prompted the French king to voluntarily return to Edward's captivity mm. in exchange for the younger Valois. Wow. He finally died there in 1364 and was succeeded as king by Charles V, whose accession was accompanied by a defeat in Brittany at Auray, which ended the succession war there. To deal with the rampaging Rotier and secure Castile as an ally in one move, the new king gathered a large force of Rotier under a Breton called Bertrand de Guéclin and sent them to install a friendly contender on the Castilian throne in 1365, wow. Henry of Trastamara. The mm. deposed king, Pedro the Cruel, went to the Black Prince, who was now Duke of Aquitaine, for help. Okay. Realizing the strategic benefit of having a friendly monarch in Castile, mm. the French gathered an army and marched against Henry. Now this I definitely didn't hear about, like, you know, the English having allies in Christian Spain. Because, bearing in mind at this time, remembering rightly, Spain was not exactly a unified country in itself. I mean, I can't remember how many years before Portugal formed its own country, or if it was formed, then, then swallowed up by Spain, and then, then either Portugal force their independence from the Spanish or or um were given their freedom by the Spanish whether it be the Christians or the Moors that were occupying Spain cuz you got you got the main from what i remember you do have the the most well known dis areas of Spain at this time which is obviously Castile Navarre and Aragon and I'm not sure it'll probably answer my question in a bit, but I'm not sure where Le Le oh I'm such a box head. There it's right there, Leon. Henry, defeating him at Nahera in 1367 mm. and putting Pedro back on the throne. Wow. Unfortunately for him, this reign only lasted two more years before Henry assassinated his rival and took the crown wow. once again. A Francophile was now firmly on Castile's throne. By the time Edward returned to Bordeaux in the late 1360s, he was growing ill from a disease contracted in Spain, mm. and his direct rule in Aquitaine was creating discontent among long-time English subjects, not only the lands gained at Brittany. To pay for his military campaigns and the court of Bordeaux, Aquitaine's overlord had been imposing harsh taxes for mm. years, but when he declared yet another fouage or hearth tax in 1368, some of the highest feudal lords in the realm revolted, petitioning Charles V for wow. assistance. It was the chance he had been waiting for. Hmm. Technically, <clears throat> Charles no longer had sovereignty over Aquitaine, but used a loophole in the Treaty of Brittany as an excuse to wow. receive the discontented nobles and again formally confiscate English possessions in France mm. during late 1369. Despite attempted peace overtures by Edward III, Charles V was eager for revenge mm. and the war was back on. The French attacked immediately, seizing the thinly defended counties of Ponthieu and Roreg with new tactics. Smaller mobile contingents of soldiers replaced the large mm. massed armies which had been defeated at Crecy and Poitiers. Charles V also commanded that his generals refuse battle with the English, wary of suffering the bitter defeats of the 1340s and 1350s again. So basically hit and run raids. 
as Ekiten's unwieldy new borders were being attacked. Edward III's son, John of Gaunt, launched a limited chevauchée in mm. Normandy before withdrawing back to Calais not long after. In the following year, 1370, a notorious captain called Sir Robert Knowles was contracted mm. to lead 4,000 troops to do the same thing. They set out on a devastating raid from Calais, and from there, devastated northern France before approaching Paris. Again, Shell V restrained his knights from meeting the English in open battle, and Knowles's band moved further into France. Realizing he needed a military leader with whom he saw eye to eye, France's Valois king made the pragmatic Breton Rotier, Captain Bertrand de Guerclin, a formidable guerrilla leader who had previously served in Castile, the new constable of France. Mm. This new commander quickly <coughs> made a base at Caen and raised a force to meet Knowles' 4,000 before marching after the English. Mm. Errors in coordination and internal division among the raiding army resulted in disaster in early December 1370, when Guerclaw surprised and crushed it at the battles of Point Velon and Var, destroying the Chevauchet before it could inflict any real damage on the king's reputation. In the south, French forces under Charles V's brother, the Duke of Anjou, continued the English disaster by capturing Agenais, Limousin and Bezec, with many local lords defecting from their Plantagenet mm. overlords and going over to the Valois. The now ailing Black Prince was livid about the treachery of his lords, and reacted violently when the Bishop of Limoges, his own son's godfather, mm. betrayed the town to the French. He marched there, stormed into the city, and brutally sacked it against all chivalric conventions, wow. supposedly not even sparing women and children who mm. begged at his feet. Sickly and demoralized by the death of... I know I don't know much about the Black Prince anyhow, but... I was never... I've never known the... Well, it's a bit of a weird way of saying it, but... As much as little I know about the Black Prince... I never knew he was this ruthless, especially towards women and children. With his eldest son, the Black Prince went home to England in 1371, a tired man, leaving John of Gaunt in charge of Aquitaine. After Poitou was wrenched away from the Plantagenet crown in 1372, Edward III realized more help was needed, mm. and so he sent the Earl of Pembroke to Aquitaine with 160 soldiers in 20 ships three of which were larger, battle-worthy vessels with archery towers on them. Hmm. As Pembroke was approaching La Rochelle Harbour at the height of a coastal inlet, however, he was confronted by a smaller fleet of Castilian combat galleys which were waiting for him to arrive. Castile's ships launched their attack first and came into close quarters with the outnumbering but outmatched English, inflicting a few losses among the non-combat craft. Nevertheless, Pembroke's meager number of archers managed to do their job incredibly well, laying down a precise rain of arrows on the Iberian ships. At the same time, his spear-wielding men-at-arms managed to bravely fight off boarding attempts by the enemy wow. until dusk, when the fleets separated. <coughs> Pembroke sailed slightly out to sea and set anchor, while the Castilians waited just off La Rochelle until dawn the next day. The English were nervous, they couldn't escape because the enemy galleys were faster than their own ships, nor could they pass through the treacherous shallow waters of La Rochelle at low tide. However, some Poitivon knights and their retinues did row out to join the English during the night. Mm. Pembroke kept his ships anchored, not expecting an enemy attack until high tide. However, the Castilian ships used their shallower draft and mm. closed on the English while they were still immobile spraying their decks and rigging wow. with oil, before lighting the fuel with flaming arrows. Mm. This was the end of the battle, in a complete victory for France's wow. Iberian ally. Many of the English were burned alive, most of their ships were destroyed, and Pembroke himself was taken prisoner. English naval superiority, established at Sluis in 1340, mm. met its end at La Rochelle, and a planned expedition by Edward III himself was cancelled. The next year, John of Gaunt led around 10,000 men out from Calais on the so-called Great Chevauchet, laying waste to a massive swath of land on his march mm. all the way to Bordeaux. 
Nevertheless, wow. the French did not engage the English in pitched battle, instead harassing John's vulnerable supply lines Guerrilla and picking warfare. off any stragglers or raiding columns which strayed too far. This effectively limited the damage, mm. and even though the Chevauchet pulled Valois soldiers away from Aquitaine, by the close of 1373, almost all of the province was under French control. English territory in France had been reduced to its pre-war levels once again. Mm. Rather than covering each small-scale military action over the next decade, we'll cover the crucial dynastic politics which begins to affect the course of the war from this point on. In the June of both 1376 and mm -hmm. 1377, England suffered a great loss. The bedridden Black Prince, formerly the great wow. model of medieval chivalry, succumbed first, hmm. followed the year after by his legendary father, Edward III, who perished after a reign of half a century, hmm. widely viewed as a golden age for the Kingdom of England. His successor was Richard II, second son of the Black Prince. Since he was still a minor, however, mm -hmm. true authority would be wielded by a regency council until the king came of age. I might have asked, asked this question before, but um, can someone like answer answer me this question? Like, when was the Magna Carta signed? Because I know it was effectively where a king, any king, king of England had to hold had to have council with um with lords all over england before any action could be taken i might have got that wrong but just curious what what year was the magna carta like introduced and signed because i'm not sure if it was before the hundred years war or after or during only Sorry, days probably, after Richard II's coronation. I probably asked that in a very weird way. <clears throat> the boy king's realm was beset <coughs> by a series of mm. lightning ship-borne raids on its mm. channel ports. From Rye in the east to Plymouth in the west, the French pirates, led by a... T you French bastard. Sorry. Talented knight and admiral. Sorry. It's where I'm from called John de Vienne, used their dominance of the sea to viciously plunder mm. and loot. France's political situation also changed when in mid-September 1380, Charles V the Wise, France's Valois monarch who had held his kingdom together in its darkest hour mm. and doggedly led the reconquest of wow. Aquitaine, died of an illness. Mm. He left the crown to the 11-year-old Charles VI, also a minor. This wow. situation gave the king's four uncles, the so-called Princes of Blood, mm. an opportunity to form a Regency Council as well, the Dukes of Anjou, Berry, Bourbon and Burgundy. The Duke of Burgundy, Philippe the Bold, was the youngest son who was captured with John II at Poitiers in 1356, and his dynasty would bring Burgundy to power in the 15th century. Unfortunately for France, the Regency also gave the Dukes an opportunity to exploit mm. their positions to gain more power, wow. and they squandered the carefully maintained treasury of Charles V. Mm. The political situation had changed again in both kingdoms by the late 1380s, as both kings asserted their independent rule. In France, Charles VI embarked on a personal mm. rule, dismissing the Valois magnates from his council in wow. November of 1388 and replacing them with a group of his father's old advisors, known mm. as the Marmosets. His rule started well, and the people began to call their king the Beloved. But on the other side of the English Channel, Richard II's reign descended into a tyranny throughout the last wow. decade of the 14th century. While the king managed to forge a 28-year truce with the French, his internal problems began to get worse. This all came to a climax when John of Gaunt's son, Henry mm. Bolingbroke, was cast out of England for ten years as a political threat. The wow. former didn't react to his son's exile, but when Gaunt died in 1399, and Richard II both mm. extended his banishment to life and confiscated his vast Duchy of Lancaster, the mm. Rubicon had been crossed. Henry <coughs> Bolingbroke returned and landed at the Humber estuary in June, and almost immediately, most of Richard's nobles deserted him, 
unnerved wow. by the king's actions. Richard, who had travelled to Ireland to put down a rebellion there, mm. was deposed and died a few months later in wow. prison, while the House of Lancaster became the Royal House of England when its mm. usurping patriarch came to the throne as Henry IV. As the 15th uh -huh. century approached, it seemed as though internal strife in England and wise rule in France would set the tone for another generation. However, mm. a single figure would turn that state of affairs on its head and reignite Henry the English the war effort, Henry V. Mm. Our story of the Hundred Years' War will continue soon, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see the next video in the series. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our... So basically, it's definitely Agincourt. Because I believe... Sorry, let me get that off. I believe this is where, where it will lead up to the Battle of Agincourt. Which, I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but... To me, from what I remember hearing or reading, is... um. Agincourt wasn't so much of a victory for the English, it was more of an upset, but I might say more in the next video. So anyway, if you like this reaction, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next